In this module, we'll be covering foot x-rays. This includes the AP lateral and oblique views. For the AP foot exam, you'll have the patient on the table. They'll be in a sitting position. Some will prefer to lie down, and it is possible to do this examination with them lying down. However, it can complicate the situation because if a patient is asked to put their foot down flush onto a cassette, the force of their leg with them laying down may cause their, their toes to lift up and their heel to actually push the cassette across the table, which can create some instability. So I would just simply recommend getting your patient to, to sit up, if, if at all possible, while they're flex, they flex their knee and place their foot flush onto the cassette. Your camera is 40 inches away from the receptor or the film and it will be angled 10 degrees toward the heel or, or toward the head, the patient themselves, so, so we can compensate for the arch of the foot. So the foot is arched such that some of the bones are angled and it's not, you're not able to see those articulations between the joints without angling the camera toward the heel. So that's why we do that. Your crosshairs are at the highest ridge of the foot. Everybody's got a ridge on their, their foot, even flat-footed people. So you want to center the crosshairs right there at the center of the foot at the level of the crosshairs. Now, mind you, I see this patient it has a large foot. It's close to the size of the cassette. You can turn the cassette diagonally if you're not able to get the entire foot onto the cassette. In this case, the most important anatomy of the foot are the toes. You want to make sure you do not cut the toes off, that they're on there safely. You can see the light. The light doesn't throw their toes off, off the cassette. I wouldn't so much worry about the heel because in the AP view, there's a lot of bones that overlap the calcaneus, so you won't visualize the heel. But you'll have your collimators opened wide from the, uh, the, from the side, and top to bottom so you make sure you include all of the anatomy on the foot. A good technique for this examination is three mass at 58 kbp. Here is a AP examination as it reflects on an x-ray. You'll see that the the anatomy that we discussed earlier, the most important part are the toes You'll want to make note, you see this is a skin flap here. This is where the skin ends and where you actually visualize the toes on the outside of the body. A lot of people, if they're asked to x-ray toes, they'll actually come in here and, and have the patient place their foot on a cassette and they'll collimate to this portion of the foot when they may be oblivious that the toes actually come all the way down into the foot and they're very long as opposed to being short extremities here. So when you're evaluating your exam, you wanna make sure that you don't do this. You don't burn your toes out at the very end because your film is too dark. But you also wanna be able to visualize the, uh, the tarsals here in the foot and the inner spaces. And this sometimes will get whited out. See, we can see the toes but we can't see the proximal portion of the foot. So you have to find a good medium. This is like the femur x-ray or some other x-rays where you've got a variety of thicknesses that are within the foot. So when you're shooting the, the toes and the foot together, sometimes it's a challenge to get that balance of seeing both the toes and the inner spaces here. So this is gonna take a little bit of play. For the lateral foot, you'll have your camera angled back uh, to a uh, straight 90 degree angle toward the table. It's, it's perfectly uh, perpendicular to the foot and to the table. We're at 40 inches and the crosshairs are centered toward the center of the foot. You simply take a cassette, place the foot on the cassette, and you'll angle right at the middle of the foot so that you're including the heel, the toes, and yes, the ankle in the entire examination. The reason we include the ankle in the lateral foot is because the talus of the foot actually creeps up into the ankle joint. So it's kind of a beautiful merging, but you don't want to cut the talus off at the expense of not trying to get a foot 
ankle x-ray. The foot is parallel to the table. It's completely sideways. I mean, it's, it's not too hard to eyeball this, but you do have to pay attention. Make sure that it's not rotated. You also, again, in this image, have to make sure that you're not cutting your toes off here on the edge of the cassette. This is close. I might want to diag uh, rotate my cassette so that it's diagonal and we're fitting the entire foot on the cassette in this case. A, bench, uh, a baseline technique for a lateral foot is 3.5 mass at 60 kbp. And here's the lateral foot. As you can see, you can visualize an enormous amount of the foot. This is the most comprehensive view of the foot x-rays because we can see our distal feet, our uh, metatarsals in profile, our tarsals here, and then of course the larger bones of the foot, the talus and the calcaneus. You can see here, I mentioned the talus creeps up into the ankle. Here's the ankle joint. You can see it's the, the, the malleolus of the tib fib. You don't have to memorize all these terms. You simply know that the leg bone creeps down into the foot. And when you see those two bones overlapping one another, you know you've got a good film. Also, the toes here are overlapping one another. So you want to make sure that you see your foot in good profile. You'll mark your cassette right or left accordingly. And that is a good foot x-ray. I do want to also point out the trabeculi or the bone markings here. This is a beautiful x-ray because you can see the patterns of the bones. So if we have a hairline fracture or small nuances, the radiologist is very, uh, pro is, is, this enables the radiologist to be able to see any small uh, abnormalities here in the foot because of this, this beautiful pattern we've established. There's a closer look at where the sinuses are. Sinuses are, in, in most part, you can, you can see through the foot you can see these little spaces here will go completely through. So we've got ourselves a good lateral. Now for the oblique foot, there are certain parts of the foot that are difficult to see without the oblique. So we'll want to include that in many circumstances. You'll angle just like you did the, the uh, AP foot. Now, those of you who have heard this before, I call it an AP because I don't want to confuse you even though I'm about to. This is technically known as the dorsal plantar uh, view, but for simplicity's sake, we're always talking about AP, which is anatomically correct. So I'm just gonna go ahead and refer to the foot as AP as, as opposed to DP. But if you work in a, uh, a podiatrist's office, he may ask you to do a DP view of the foot, and you might just have to remember that this is uh, hence an AP of the foot as we're referring here and we do that again for simplicity's sake. Your tube is 40 inches from the tabletop or the receptor. Your collimator is open so that you can see the whole foot. You want that light extending past the heel itself. You want the patient's foot rotated inward 15 degrees so we can get an angle of that foot and of course your tube is angled 10 degrees, so you've got a lot of angu angu angulation going on here. But you want to make sure you, foot the, you, you fit the foot completely onto the cassette and you open up your collimators to include the entire foot, especially the toes. But here again, we're going to have the entire foot on here. A good baseline technique for this is three mass at, KB, at 60 kbp. And here's what an oblique looks like. You can see here, this is a good example of where we slightly burned out that toe. This is getting more and more dark here. We, we need to visualize that more, but you see a very comprehensive view of the foot. See how it's, it's nearly burned out here in the, in the toes, the distal portion of the toes. But look here, the calcaneus is almost whited out. We're losing some of that visualization. So this is kind of an example of the juggle that I had mentioned earlier, where you're trying to accommodate the technique for the heel, which is a very thick bone, but also still get visualization of the toes themselves. Now, speaking of toes, occasionally you'll be asked to examine the toes. 
and it's simply a foot x-ray except you're cutting off the tarsals you're trying to get the proximal part of the toes the toes have three parts one two three here one two three here one two three here this bone these bones they go all the way down into the foot so you want to include each of these bases in your toe x-rays so you're going to hear from your doctor if he asks you for toe x-rays and you collimate just to the skin you're going to go all the way into the foot and keep it close here sometimes it's easy to simply do an examination of the foot and then digitally cut out the the other parts of the foot so you can you can uh, include that appropriately now the reason you don't just go ahead and throw two shoots to the wind and do an examination of a foot and submit that to the doctor is because if the doctor, if your doctor has ordered toe x-rays and he submits this, this examination uh, to the radiologist, the radiologist is expecting toes. He's not expecting to read on an entire foot. He's expecting to read on toes alone. So if you include an entire foot, now you're not only asking the radiologist to dictate beyond uh, what they're charging for, but you're also uh, in, um, in jeopardy of submitting an examination that's not appropriate as it was ordered by the doctor and is reimbursed by the insurance company. So you want to be as detailed as you can about that. This includes our foot examination. Thank you very much.